Okay. Thank you for coming. It's the last presentation, finally. Um, I'm going to talk about the WebGL streaming. That is uh, a project I have been working for the last, last six months with, uh, with three colleagues more from the Cute company. Let's start with who am I? I'm working in the Cute company right now. I'm the Cute network out maintainer. Um, also, uh, the maintainer of this new plugin. As you can expect. Before that, I was a game developer in GameLove, but so I have some uh, graphics engine development experience. Okay, first of all, what's WebGL? WebGL is the standard for uh, graphics in, in the browser. It's based on ES2 or OpenGL ES2. And as you can see in this graph, it's a bit messy how the versions maps, but okay. You need to keep clear that OpenGL ES2 is more or less the same with, uh, with some differences to WebGL, at least in the functionality or the, or the features available. <clears throat> now, what's WebGL streaming? WebGL streaming is the way to stream cute applications to the, to the browser, a WebGL capable browser. In principle, we can stream uh, OpenGL ES2 applications. This is an important thing. Uh, so if you have a, a cute application, a cute quick application, and uh, you want to port to your desktop, uh, to your browser, you can use the, this thing to, to try to render and, and see how it looks. Uh, it has an asterisk there because for cute quick, you can use uh, any desktop web G, uh, OpenGL version because how we wrote the, the cute quick in the past, uh, it's only using the, subsist, uh, the su subset of functionality that ES2 provides. So, if you will, tomorrow, if you download the Qt beta, you will be able to use this plugin directly, even on desktop. Use cases that we, we can find using this, we can have a remote application access. So if we don't, need, if we don't, if we don't want to go to the, the physical computer uh, modif and do some changes, we can use the browser and do it remotely. We can publish some applications. For example, if we are at home uh, and we are, we need to go to uh, one application that we have in the in the computer that we have in the office, we can do something like this. I'm actually doing that. Remote control of headless devices is the first case we we implemented, and of course, presentations. How was it implemented? It's based on a cute platform abstraction plugin. I will talk about this later. Uh, it contains a minimal web server inside, a um, web socket server, the class from Qt, uh, JavaScript. Oh, of course, JavaScript is part of the, the technology because we need to render in the browser, so we will see how later. And WebGL, of course. This is all about WebGL. What's QPA or Qt platform abstraction? It's a way to communicate with the operating system. Our applications do not uh, rewrite in every different operating system. We need to give uh, to the user some way to uh, specify the how, to, how can we open a window, how can we can close a window, how can we get the OpenGL functions. So this is done in, the, in, a, in a level that we call it QPA. There are different QPAs, one for each platform, Windows, Linux, Linux we have two, XCB, Wayland, uh, Mac OS, and many more. The important thing here is that it allows us to resolve the OpenGL function pointers. This is uh, where the magic happens. The web server is a really, a small thing is built with Qt. Uh, I use it to send required files. Files, for example, uh, the index HTML, and of course the JavaScript that I need. Of, or for example, the fav icon. It's a temporary solution. It will replace. I will talk about this later as well. 
QWebSocket server, it connects the application to the browser, basically. It's a channel we use to, to interact with in both directions from the application to the browser and um, give input uh, back. Also, sends uh, encoded OpenGL commands in a, binary, in a binary format. That is the way I can communicate with it. And if the application or the, the OpenGL command needs a, an answer, it's also the way to send the response from the user. Sorry, from the uh, real WebGL driver. JavaScript, it receives uh, the, and decodes the OpenGL calls. So with this WebSocket, we are just sending information to JavaScript. Uh, when the OpenGL call is the, is the code, it's it's uh, executed in the screen. Um, uh, is, is when we can see things on the screen, draw st stuff. And also, uh, install some event filters to be able to access to the mouse, keyboard, um, touch events in tablets, or any computer that has a, a touch enabled display. WebGL is used to display 3D stuff or or 2D stuff using the hardware acceleration of the computer, basically. Uh, as I said, I, I was a game developer, and game developer really love particles. It's something that, trust me, it's how it happens. So, we have particles. The thing is, why is this relevant, having particles in a, here? Anybody guess that? Yes. Everything is rendered in the web, web browser right now. I have a problem with the rescaling, sorry. Okay, what's supported after the mini demo? I, we are supporting Qt Quick, controls, control two, everything that Qt Quick supports is supported here. Maybe an application is not completely fully working, but it's something that at some point will be fixed. Qt OpenGL, as uh, as I said, uh, everything that we will, we write with OpenGL ES2 should be able to uh, be shown in the screen without. Maybe with some changes, but yes, it works. It, uh, one thing that is a bit problematic is that it's single user. In the past, I wrote in the blog post that maybe it's possible to send this different application, this send different windows to different users, but this is something that uh, I had to remo remove because our customer wanted to, to have a, a focus on security or more than security stabiliz stabilization and performance. Uh, for the 510 release, we are not going to be able to have multiple web application or multi-user web applications. It's a pity, but maybe it's something that in the future we will have. Uh, the main problem of single user, uh, if you have a cute, cute window, it makes no sense to have two different users working at the same time in the same window. I mean. Okay, yes, you, maybe you can plug two different mouse, but uh, I think it's not going to be something usable. Also, there is another problem that uh, op some OpenGL calls require to uh, uh, receive a, a parameter from the, from the GPU driver. So every time that we need one of these parameter, uh, uh, OpenGL calls, we will stop the rendering. And this is something that we don't want, not just in WebGL streaming, we don't want anywhere. And we can improve the security. We, we, we can talk about this later. <coughs> I expect nobody, nobody is leaving. Uh, the, the, the problem here is uh, a part of Qt itself, how the, we interact with operating system, a part of the windowing system, the windowing, windowing problems, 
we have a problem that we, that we need to address in the future, uh, creating an, a better HTTP server, because for this uh, release is something really minimal that is the minimal to be able to get some JavaScript. Uh, also in the future, instead of running everything in the same process, maybe we can have a HTTP server that when it receives a uh, a request, it can span a new process that represents every user. So this is good because if the user managed to grasp the application, not all the users will be uh, disconnected, only just one. Okay, uh, this is the part of the code, a couple of functions that I implemented in JavaScript to to interpret um, the code, the OpenGL in the WebGL part. Uh, as you can see, uh, the first thing I do when I create uh, the canvas that I use to render is to replace, for example, create program. I'm replacing the uh, create <coughs> original create program function for a new one that uh, basically do, does the sum of Caching gets a new identifier from the program ID, creates the actual program. Um, uh, I have to do some mapping to be able to interact with Open, OpenGL and WebGL. For the create shader, it's the same, a bit more complex. Um, in the C++ part, we. I have the in the QPA plugin, it's implementing all the op OpenGL functions in a way that uh, instead of co co sending the, the request to the, the driver, it it uh, sends an event, or not an event, uses the WebSocket server to, to communicate with the, the client. For example, if we need to know what's, how is the implementation of create shader, we need to go using this a bit of template magic, more templates, even more, even, even more. <laughs> and you can see that uh, what I'm doing is, this is to communicate different threads because multi-threading, um, the post is basically contacting the WebSocket server and sending the, uh, the GL command in a serialized way. Things we, we can do with this thing. We can debug, for example. That is quite cool. If now, it takes some time. The thing is, uh, the way uh, our scene graph works uh, is not sending updates until uh, the screen changes. So for this, the screen was completely static, so I was not receiving any web OpenGL update, but we can have a look to the, to the commands here. This is a really basic uh, open WebGL uh, debugger. It's able to, to to show us the state of the uh, WebGL state, ma state machine. We can see the textures that are loaded in the browser. Those, for example, this text. I think I can, I don't, I cannot hear. Okay. Because of the browser? Yes, no, because of the plugin. Yes, I cannot. Uh, for example, this texture is the used as a glyph atlas that is used to uh, render every character in the screen. The cute company logo. Oh, the face. Also, we can check the, the buffers and all the information from the buffers. Even the, the, the programs. 
that are executed and converted. Also, I want to show uh, a demo. Maybe you saw the demo before, but this is a, a really, really basic OpenGL application and shows a, a cube being rendered in the WebGL part. Basically, you can move with the, the keyboard and the mouse. Uh, it's not really exciting. <coughs> My presentation is uh, running in this application we have that is called QML, QML Sync. What is the uh, here? QML Sync. Uh, that is how allows us to uh, preview QMLs, basically. And uh, it's using the, the plugin, because to activate this, this you need to, uh, is the way, is the standard way to activate uh, platform plugins is uh, platform WebGL, and if you want to specify the port, uh, you can set there. Every application will use uh, a different port. That's the reason I have one specified. If not, the uh, default port is 8080. Can you switch uh, to WebGL on the fly? So first. Yes, it's time for questions, Can you Creo. I think. Can you? Can you switch to WebGL on the fly? That means start the application first without WebGL and then later switch to WebGL. No, it's not possible because the the entire uh, the plugin uses this way of I show you that the the OpenGL functions are basically this: create post event and query and send the via the network. It could be implemented in the future if it's really needed. We can have something like this that to be able to allow uh, local interaction and also remote interaction. It's something that we need to experiment. This is a heavily in, in development stage. It works, has some bugs, but it works. Mm -hmm. Can you can you start the application on the request of the user? This is the idea for the future. To have the HTTP server that is running all the time, um, when a user connects, create an application for him. All right, so, so then we could have multiple users creating multiple yes. instances of the application. Yes, this yeah, is okay. the idea for the future. Okay. Uh, I didn't quite understand the first question. Is that meaning that if you are connected then to a remote server and the uh, internet connection is intermittent, that means that your application would terminate or can the application recover from that? Well, uh, do you mean if the application crashes? Yeah, yeah. Well, if the application crashes, it crashes. No, uh, no, I, don't, <laughs> no I don't mean the application crashes. I mean the I mean, application is running on the server and then the, the internet connection goes down for a little bit and then comes back up. It reconnects. It's basically the same. If I press now F5, will reload, and that's the same. So yes, will, you will uh, have the same point in the application, and oh. it will start sending you the OpenGL commands again, but from the same point. The oh. If the application is not crashing, so the application it stops. Yes. Hey. If I go to the previous uh, slide and re refresh, it's the same. So if it's basically refreshing the browser. Yes. Which would then mm -hmm. let the application because the application is running on uh, the application is running on a different process, so it, it is no okay. Well, yes, Fabulous. application. Yes, thank you. Uh, another question: If you have the text, if you have a texture that changes, uh, does this slow down the? Of, of course, the, interface? the best use case for this is to have uh, something that. Uh, it's not changing the content. For example, here we have uh, the the characters to to render the the text are always the same. So it's not a it's not a performance problem. But if, and this is just a 
uh, interrogation that is a character. In, so it's moving, but we are not uh, sending the texture again. But if, for example, if we have uh, an animation that relies on different images, a sprite, for example, it will be a performance penalty, yes, because we need to send every frame new information to continue the animation. But if it's just moving things in the screen, it's OK, yes, we will need to send the, the updates, but the updates is just, OK, this quad comes from here to, to there. Okay, and what if you are running a like a desktop application mm -hmm. and you are inputting text, so you will have to receive updates from the the same graph. Uh, basically, it's reusing glyphs from the same font because you are not changing font on the fly. But uh, what is the performance? I mean, if we are connecting not in local but over the internet, do we experience delays while typing text in a text input or something? Of if the, it depends on the glyph cache. If the glyph cache does sense uh, the text before even characters that are not being used, but yeah. could be used because we are writing uh, text in the screen with an text editor, we could have some problem. We can have some problems because of this, because we need to send the sub data of the yeah. texture every time that we need to write a new character. So, in fact, this typing speed could improve over yes, time yes. because and we are more and more glyphs. And the, the good cache. thing about this is that. It's also a good way to improve our uh, scene graph uh, implementation because you could scene. send all the glyphs. Uh, yes. At, at so okay. there is a lot of row, row for him improve the performance, but actually it works. It's something that we want to experiment with it, but it works. Does the size of the application adjust to the browser window? Uh, excuse me. Uh, does the size of the application resize with the browser window? Uh, in this version, no. But uh, for I broke it for some reason, <laughs> uh -huh. uh, trying to uh, remove the the loading screen because uh, this debugger I saw, uh, I just saw uh, if there is another context. WebGL context is not able to, to give you the, the choice of, okay, I want to debug this context. Debug the first context created, and the first context created was the uploading a screen that is a rotating thing. It's a, probably it's a bug in the debugger, or maybe I don't know how to use it. Maybe there is a hidden option somewhere that allows me to check. I want this context. That's the reason. I, and in this version, I broke the, this for the, for the demo. <laughs> One of the multiple problems I had. But yes, if you go to uh, the demo booth and you go to check the, op the boss, this boss uh, demo we have, you can re resize the browser and it works. It's just here, it's broken, because I have a dev, tech, uh, dev build. Um, so Qt WebGL development is completely orthogonal to Qt 3D? So doesn't that different seem things. Okay, but doesn't it seem like a bit of a shame? Because after all, WebGL is all about 3D and Qt 3D is all about 3D. And you could envision many client applications that could either use one or the other. You mean use Qt 3D to optimize the, this thing or, or, or what's your... Uh, your I just, uh, it seems like a bit of a shame that the develop, development is being uh, done in parallel. What, what may be more mm -hmm. effective to be unified, that there may be certain areas that could be used together. For example, you could consider, uh, well, one very simple thing would be you could imagine Qt 3D to be done with WebGL, a very simple first approximation. So you mean uh, rewrite Q Q3D Q to use WebGL? It was, it was just the first thing that came to mind is, isn't it kind of a shame that all this 3D has been done in two different modules or two different ways completely orthogonally, especially client applications. If you, you could think of many client applications that may not need network or they, if they do need network, they could be done with Qt uh, 3D and they could implement some network networking with a server as well. So the architecture could easily be done one way or the other as far as the client is concerned. It's, I think it's a, Qt WebGL is a great thing and I think Qt 3 is, 3D is a great thing. It just kind of feels a little bit of a shame that they're, it's been doubled, so to say. Yeah, the thing is, uh, it's, are, they are completely different projects. They are yeah, not fixing the same problem. They are not. Uh, Maybe the different. difference is that over here, uh, the Qt application is running on a different process, on a different, it could be on a different device somewhere. 
Yes. Uh, well, Q Q3D is an application. The application is running on the same place that you are actually executing it, uh, and you are seeing it. Whereas uh, the use case over here is completely different. Uh, let's say yes. you have a machine um, in a factory uh, where, let's say, uh, humans cannot go. Or let's say it's, it's somewhere there, and there's a technical person coming in. Um, you necessarily do not need to have a user interface attached to that machine because probably it's not required. But then there is some problem with the machine, and, and, uh, and the technician comes with, a, with his own tablet and goes to the machine and just logs it into it and then sees the results are on the dashboard. So that could be, for example, a use case. Whereas the Q3D is running, is, is, a, is an intensive thing and it would be running on the same GPU. Over here, uh, even uh, the device uh, need not have a GPU because it's just generating GL commands yes. and sending it uh, to a browser. And the browser is the one that we should have uh, that supports the GL uh, commands and the drawing. So, the device which is actually running the Qt application need not have a GPU. It could be a, a very simple low-end hardware that basically runs uh, the Qt application, creates the GL commands, and just sends it over a buffer. So there are quite different use cases that way. You could envisage that with a Qt 3D application as well. You could remotely have a Qt application that doesn't need a, a display or doesn't have a display and a Qt 3D client that communicates with that using HTTP or whatever as well, though. Possibly. But uh, uh, different no. use cases. <laughs> uh, Any other questions? Uh, yeah. What about uh, audio and video? Uh, <laughs> of course, no, no audio, no video. No video? <laughs> no video, video because video is just a texture. Yes, but you are going to send updates every frame. And this okay. is the, sadly the worst case scenario we can have. Okay. <laughs> and, and <laughs> Actually, can... when people ask me this question, uh, since the QPA plugin uh, even implements the way you interact with uh, the, this link, for example, the, the link for yeah. my email address, if you click there, uh, well, in this case, no, because I have no default mail client, but it will try to open the, the browser. So if you want to have this scenario and you want to have an embedded YouTube video, so the link, uh, char uh, charge the, use the another tab to, to view. Okay, and so would it be possible to imagine in the future that you could use um, some standard like WebRTC, for example, mm -hmm. to be able to stream the audio and video from di directly from the host to the client and use your JavaScript uh, mm -hmm. page to just display it in place. Oh, if you have a really powerful network, maybe you can do that and maybe it's valid. I mean, okay. The, ben, the thing is, you are not going to send the textures compressed because we cannot compress them on the fly. That's the another, another problem. More questions? Oh. Okay. Thank oh. you, Yusus. Thank you, everybody, for attending the Cute World Summit. <laughs>